Hey everybody, welcome to Sid's Little Corner of the Internet. We've got another Transformers review coming your way. This time around we're actually doing a triple feature. So we're going to be taking a look at the Transformers Legacy Deluxe Class figures, the Predacon Sandstorm, Predacon Buzzsaw, and Autobot Night Prowler. And the reason that I'm doing it this way is because these guys were all three released at the same time. I picked all three of them up at it the exact same time at my local Walmart. And they're all reissues, remolds of existing figures that we have. So we're not going to spend a whole lot of time diving into the details on these. But I wanted to get this review out to you so you have awareness that they're out there. And we can talk a little bit about them. So we're going to look at that packaging. And we're going to start right here with the Autobot Night Prowler. And we'll get a quick look there. Of course, you have Legacy. There you've got his artwork, Autobot Night Prowler. Deluxe Class, artwork on the side. On the back, you have product shots. Down low, you have all your warnings. You've got artwork over here and additional information on the bottom. So we're going to go ahead and set that box off on the side. And then we're just going to go ahead and reach around here. We're going to grab Buzzsaw. You've got Legacy. You've got that great artwork. I, uh, out of the three, Buzzsaw is my favorite. No doubt about it. Uh, the artwork is great. Uh, he is a deluxe class as well. Artwork. Product shots. Information. Warnings. It's all there. All right. And I do like that face that they chose. So it's a good head sculpt. And finally, for our last box, we're going to be taking a look at Sandstorm. So you've got Legacy, you've got Sandstorm, he is a deluxe class, you have that artwork, you have those product shots, you've got the sad baby and all the warnings down there, artwork over here, and information on the bottom. So that's going to do it for the packaging. There's really nothing groundbreaking on the packaging, nor on the figures themselves. But let's go ahead and jump into it, and we're going to go ahead and we're going to start with Night Prowler first. All right, so here we have Autobot Night Prowler with everything that came inside the box with him. So you do get your little sheet of warnings and your instruction booklet. So we're going to move those on out of the way. And the only accessory that he comes with, much like Cheetor, is this tail whip weapon that you uh, you get with him. So as far as the tail whip itself, it looks nice. You know, the, the color scheme, the plastic. But this is the exact same thing that we saw with Cheetor. So not a lot to talk about there. Um, we're, what we're going to do in this format, we're just going to jump right in and jump right in with the figure, talk about those accessories and everything, and then we're going to move on to the next figure. So that is the one accessory that comes with Night Prowler. So let's go ahead and bring him in and take a look at his details. And this is exactly the same thing as the Cheetor mold, the Kingdom, War for Cybertron Kingdom uh, Cheetor mold. So there's nothing new here. Just this color scheme is a little bit different as far as the molded colors and the painted colors. So you do have that head sculpt. You've got that chest. You have that cod piece. You have those feet right there. You've got the feet down here. The feet are still tiny. They're, they are still difficult for him to balance. And on the side, you've got a pretty decent amount of detail going on. And then on these arms, same thing we saw with Cheetor. What I would encourage is if you haven't already done so, go back and take a look at my reviews for each of these in their original form. So this would be the Cheetor. Look for my Cheetor review. I go into a lot of detail there. Spend a lot of time talking about the details and the articulation on the figure and get into the transformation on that as well. And the same would apply for the Buzzsaw and the Sandstorm figures in their form. So uh, here he is from the back. So a couple of... Uh, Cat arms hanging off the back. Articulation is the exact same as Cheetor, so we're not going to spend a lot of time on it. You've got shoulder. You can spin it around. You've got bicep. You've got elbow bend. You've got wrist rotation. You have waist rotation, and then you have your hips. You have rotation at the knees. Kick forward that far. Kick backward that far, and then under 90 on the knee bend. And then the feet can swing forward that far backward that far, and then you do have ankle tilt on there. So as far as that goes, articulation is all right on this guy. My biggest complaint is always going to be just the size of those feet. It does make him difficult to balance. And then you have this accessory right here, which it doesn't matter. You could plug it in this end. You could plug it in this end. Uh, it's really up to you. Just take it, plug it in to his hand, and then there you go. He's ready to go into battle. So that's really all that I'm going to cover as far as Night Prowler go goes. Again, I would encourage you, I'll have the links in the description. Go back, take a look at my old videos for Cheetor 
and uh, I'll go into a lot more detail there. But uh, this is the exact same figure as Cheetor, just painted in a different color. All right, so what we'll do now is we're going to move on and we're going to take a look at Sandstorm next. All right, next spot up. This is the Predacon Sandstorm. So this figure is the exact same mold as the War for Cybertron Kingdom Scorponok, except for one difference, and that is that head sculpt. Everything else, the molding, the geometry is exactly the same. It's just simply a difference in molded color or paint. So that being said, let's jump into it. This is everything that comes in the box. So you do get, of course, your little sheet of warnings, and then you get your instruction booklet. Let's put those off to the side, and you're left with these two accessories right here. We're going to start over here with his little fly drone. This is the, again, the exact same fly drone that you get with the Scorponok figure, just molded in a different color with some different paint apps. It does look good. I do like this little thing. I think the amount of detail on there is pretty good. So no major complaints as far as that goes. It's just the exact same thing that we've already seen. All right. Next accessory is the dual pod missile setup that we saw with Scorponok. This is just this time around painted in this really nice metallic purple. So not a lot of detail going on here. Hollow underneath. Five millimeter port so you can plug them into his claw hands. So yeah, that's it as far as the accessories go for Sandstorm. So let's go ahead and bring him in and we'll take a look at his details. Starting right up here with that head. So this is the only difference between him and Scorponok. So we'll take a little bit of time here and admire that. He does look unique. So that's definitely just a face and a head only a mother could love, I guess. But yeah, there you go. And then moving on down to the chest. I do like the sculpt work and the texturing that's in the plastic, so that's all good. Just everything we've already seen in the past. And then coming down to those legs. And coming around here to the side, lift the arm up out of the way. You got all of his scorpion legs tucked up back here, up under the arm. And then you have these claws right here. Uh, these are about the same color as an orange. So <laughs> it's kind of interesting. The color and texture, it's, it's almost like an orange peel. And then you've got your 5mm ports inside there. And then coming around to the back, you can see, although this is hollow, they've added some ribbing in there, which gives it a little bit of texture. So not bad, not bad at all. Now back here, you do have those hollow areas behind his legs. So articulation is the same as we saw with Scorponok. So let's just briefly run over that. So your head is on a ball joint. You can get a little bit of side to side, a little bit of up, a little bit of down, and left and right. Shoulders all the way around. Bicep rotation, you get just under 90. And then down here, you do get wrist rotation, and you can open these claws and close them if you want. A little bit of waist rotation, but really everything gets in the way. So you're not going to get much that you can use. And then down here at the legs, you can go about that far out. You get thigh rotation, that far forward, that far back, and then over 90 degrees at the knee. Feet will go up that far, will go down. Well, that far, but it's mostly for transformation. And then your ankle tilt. All right, so again, same articulation that we saw with the Scorponok figure. Reference my original Scorponok video if you want to see that in more detail and of course to see transformation on how to get this guy back and forth between his modes. But that's it for Scorponok, or uh, excuse me, not Scorponok, that is it for Sandstorm. So what we'll do now is we'll move on to our third and final figure, which is the Predacon Buzzsaw. And last but not least, this is the Predacon Buzzsaw. So as with the others, uh, this is a remold of the Transformers War for Cybertron Kingdom Waspinator. So all the geometry, everything here is exactly the same except for that head sculpt. So that is the only thing that's different. But let's go ahead and get started. And he does come with everything you see here. So he has his sheet of instructions and his little sheet of warnings. So we'll get those out of the way and we'll focus on that one accessory. So this is his butt, his stinger that in robot mode doubles as a weapon. So the exact same thing that we saw with the Waspinator figure, just molded in a different color. All right, not a lot going on here. Not a lot to talk about. All right, so that is it for the one accessory, but let's go ahead and let's bring Buzzsaw in and take a look at what's going on with him. And we will start 
with that head sculpt because that head sculpt is the one thing that is different and unique and I really do like it. I hope it's coming through on camera because this guy does have light piping and he's got this really cool green that's coming through and man I really hope that's coming through on the camera. But yeah, I do like this head. This is a uh, pretty neat uh, sculpt work on this head. And coming on down to that chest, this is the exact same thing that we saw with Waspinator, just in different colors. And I do like this translucent green that they used on the eyes here for the wasp mode. So that gives it a really nice look as well. And coming on down, you have your purples and your blacks and your yellows, all warnings in nature telling you to stay away, stay away. All right, coming over here to the side, you've got a little bit more of those blacks and yellows, and then you've got those big wasp feet sticking out. And up under here, not a lot to talk about, but it is what it is. And down here, you have your, or over here, I should say, you have your arms. So you've got those purples and those yellows and those blacks and some greens in there. And then coming around to the back, I also like these translucent black wings. So these look really cool as well. I do like them probably just a bit more than the original Waspinator figure. So taking a look at him from the back here. Um, yeah, there's uh, he, he just looks like a big convoluted mess back here, just like Waspinator does. But that's OK. I still like him. Now, as far as the articulation goes, the exact same thing that we saw with Waspinator. You get a little bit up, a little bit of down, a little bit of side to side, a little bit around. And on their shoulders, up that far, all the way around. And then... 90 on the elbows, bicep rotation, and then you can move these if you want to. You can move the hands. They have wrist rotation as well. And then you do have waist rotation down here. The one thing that I have noticed is this mold or this version seems to be a little bit more loose than my Waspinator is, particularly in the waist. So it's super easy to move this waist. Um, but let us not forget, you can move those wings around too if you want to give some expressions that way. So as noted, you do have waist rotation and bringing those legs up. You can get a really good split out of this guy if you can get all of his other stuff out of the way. And then you can kick forward that far, kick backward that far, and bend the knee just under 90. And then you have thigh rotation up at that thigh right there. And then right here at the feet, you get this far down you get that far up but then you can move those heels all the way around due to transformation and then you have ankle tilt about that far so overall articulation is pretty good with this guy now as far as the accessory goes uh yeah you you you, you plug it into his hand so yeah let's do that i forgot to do that with sandstorm but i think you guys get the gist again as i noted please go back reference the videos that i did for Waspinator, for Scorponok, and for Cheetor, for anything that you feel I may have missed here, or if you want to see transformation or greater detail as far as the use of accessories or blast effects, articulation, anything like that. So, but yeah, that is it for Buzzsaw. So what we'll do now is we'll get these guys in their alt modes, we'll take a look at them from there, and we'll uh, keep moving with the review. All right, so here we see Night Prowler in his alt mode, or his Panther Cheetah some kind of a big cat mode and as we stated earlier this is just a remold of Cheetor but we're going to take a quick look at him here and look at those details so we'll bring him in and we'll take a look at that face you can see what they've done with the paint and with the eyes there and then he does have those little teeth and then continuing on down the side good amount of detail there the texturing is nice the paint is nice uh, as far as robots turning into animals goes, he makes a pretty convincing cat, I suppose. And then your, uh, your tail weapon plugs in right there. There he is from the back. You can see those feet right there, but they're not the worst thing. And then coming around to the side, not bad. Up top, you see a little bit of yellow poking through, but yeah, looks like a, looks like a big cat. And then down low, you've got, you know, a few things happening down here. You can see his hands. It's not the worst thing. Uh, but for the most part, I think he does a pretty good job there. Articulation, same as Cheetor, so you can open this mouth. You can close the mouth. Nothing at the head. You can do what you want to do with these legs. So all the way around. You can bring them out a little bit. You can bring them in a little bit. You can bring them up a little bit if you want that flying 
big cat action, you could do that, or if he's coming in to give you a big hug, you do something like that. And then you've got some motion down here. You can bring the elbows up that far, down that far, and then you can do what you want to do with these feet, down that far, up that far, and then they're on a ball joint. So you get a little bit of change of the angle, and you can do that if you want to. Totally up to you. Rear legs, you've got starting at those feet, down that far, up that far, same thing, a little bit of ankle tilt, a little bit of spin around. And then right here, they're as far back as they can go at this point, but you can bring them forward uh, essentially all the way in because it's part of the transformation. And then you can straighten them out, go all the way back there if you want to because that's a, that's a good look. And bring those hips out if you need to, and then you can get a little bit of a wiggle right there. And if you wanted to for some weird reason, I guess you could move that waist a little bit or you could move this tail a little bit or plug it in upside down if you wanted to. Because why not? There you go. Now he's a shark. So that is it as far as details and articulation on Night Prowler here. So we're not going to waste any time. We're going to jump right into the comparisons. And there's only going to be singular comparisons for each of these figures because I've done it with their original molds a few times. So what we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and bring in his direct comparison, which is Cheetor. And you can see there is no difference whatsoever between these two guys. Even the patterns of the paint are the same. They're just different molded plastic colors. So uh, what you see is what you get. All right. So let's put them nose to nose and you can see. And we'll do kind of a three quarters back view so you can see that. and apart like that. All right, so that is Night Prowler. So what we'll do now is we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna move on and the next guy up is going to be Sandstorm. So let's go ahead and bring him in. And here we see Predacon Sandstorm in his alt mode, in his scorpion mode. And I will say that I do like this color scheme for a scorpion better than the one that was on Scorponok, but as noted earlier, these, as far as the geometry goes, these two figures are the exact same thing. Sandstorm and Scorponok, other than the robot head sculpt, are the exact same thing. But let's go ahead and get into the details on Sandstorm. And we'll just start right up here on those claws. So you can see you've got those 5mm ports inside. And, you know, I, I guess I could have shown this in bot mode as well, but I knew I was going to show it here in alt mode. So, yeah, you've got ports, you plug in his accessories, and there you go. So... Moving on to the side, try to get in here, take a look at that head a little bit. So you've got those orange fangs and those little red eyes. That all looks pretty good. And then you come down to those scorpion legs. Again, just like what Scorponok had. And then moving on to the scorpion tail. Good texturing, good sculpt work. Moving around to this side, it is exactly like the other side. And there he is from the top. Here he is from the bottom. And yeah, just like Scorponok, he starts to fall apart down here. But who's really going to look at a scorpion from the bottom? You know? And again, just like Scorponok, these legs are not supporting anything. They are simply there for decoration. All your support is coming from this area right here. So when you set him down, you know, you could have the legs up like that. Nothing's going to change. So really they're just meant to be, once you've got him down, kind of arrange them where you want. But I think the scorpion mode looks pretty good here. Like I said, I like the color scheme on Sandstorm better than the color scheme on Scorponok. So speaking of Scorponok, let's go ahead and bring him on in so we have that alt mode comparison to look at. And moving Sandstorm off to the side, you can see, once again, other than that head sculpt, these two figures are exactly the same. And you can see what I was talking about with that, that color scheme there. I just think that this sandstorm looks to be more of a natural scorpion type of color. Uh, whereas, you know, Scorponok was a little more vibrant, I suppose. But yeah, these two are exactly the same. And you, you, uh, I do want to point out in this mode, uh, if you look on their shoulders over here, they do have their Predacon symbols. So uh, just something that I forgot to mention earlier. But yeah, moving them 
head to head you can see essentially the same thing is going on here so yeah no surprises there and then kind of that three-quarter view from the back same thing no surprises just the uh, exact same geometry it's kind of cool to see two robot scorpions hanging out I guess and then swinging them back around this way and giving you a view like that there you go all right so that is sandstorm and what we'll do now is we will bring in our last contestant mr buzzsaw well 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 i wonder what all the buzz is about oh it's probably about buzzsaw so this is buzzsaw in his alt mode in that wasp mode i suppose maybe it's a yellow jacket i'm not entirely sure but i'm going to go with wasp since waspinator was a wasp so going to go with that but just like the other two figures nothing is different between the the buzzsaw or waspinator except for that head sculpt so all the other geometry is exactly the same so if you already have waspinator you know exactly what you're getting in this figure but let's go ahead and look at those details because the color scheme i do like on this i think they what they've done here is really cool so starting right up here with that head you have those translucent green eyes instead of those translucent purple eyes that we see with Waspinator. I, uh, I just think that gives it kind of a nice, cool, creepy vibe. And then you got the big black mandibles right here. It looks like he's trying to pierce my finger. And coming across to the side right here, you've got a lot of yoga tucked up bot mode under there. But it collapses in pretty well, again, just like what Waspinator does. Black legs, and then coming back here to those that striped abdomen, all black thorax up here. And switching sides, the exact same thing. And then you've got those wings. And from the top, pretty darn realistic. I think it's cool. From the bottom, yeah, well, let's not talk about the bottom. So uh, I just realized I did not do articulation for Sandstorm, so uh, I'm going to do articulation here for Buzzsaw real quick. So you can pretty much put these wings wherever you want. They're on a ball joint and do what you want to do with them. Fold them up so it looks like he's landed. I guess you could do something like that and bring him out. It looks like he's in flight. Totally up to you. You can move that, those antenna whichever direction you want to move them. And you can move those mandibles in and move those mandibles out. And then you've got wherever you want to put these legs. You can swing those around. And these legs are the weight support for the figures, so you actually do want to have those set up and angled properly so they're actually supporting the weight of the figure. All right, so let's go ahead and bring Waspinator in so we can do a quick comparison of these two guys, and you can see all the similarities and the differences. So this is Kingdom Waspinator. And you can see, once again, these two are exactly the same as far as geometry goes. So the color scheme on Buzzsaw, just my opinion, I like it a little bit better. Again, it comes across a little more natural than the vibrant purples that they put on Waspinator over here. Not to take anything away from Waspinator, I still think he's a really cool figure. I really do like him. So let me get those antennas straightened out because you just look wrong. And try to bring those wings up so they match a little bit. So that way, when we do our poses here, they can look pretty similar. So let's go ahead and put them head to head so you can see how they look there. And then we'll give them a three quarter view from the back. Looking pretty cool. And then we'll bring them back around to the front like such. So yeah, I think they look pretty cool. Out of the three that I'm reviewing, this is definitely my favorite. I really enjoy him the most. I think he's the most robust in both of his forms. Uh, and he doesn't feel as wiggly as the Sandstorm does. And he's far more secure and uh, poseable, in my opinion, than the Night Prowler is. So what we'll do now is I'm going to get these guys back in their bot modes and we'll, we'll do some comparisons there. All right, so moving on to those bot mode comparisons, here we'll start with Night Prowler. And as you can see, as I mentioned earlier, this is just an exact copy of Cheetor, just with different colors. So 
we'll take a quick look here and do the uh, 360 so you can see them from all the different views. But um, what you see is what you get. If you have Cheetor, you know what you're getting. So anyway, we'll bring these guys in. We'll get a little bit of a close up there so you can see that even the faces are the same. Of course, their big cat faces are the same. All the molded in detail is exactly the same thing. And have them looking at each other. And he does have the same tiny feet balancing issues that Cheetor does. So let me, uh, I guess maybe for some symmetry there, we'll do it like this. So there you can see kind of a three quarter ISO view. And we'll move him around and give you a view like this. So yeah, it's uh, it's Twins Day. And moving around to the back. And then back around to this side. And uh, yeah, like I said, it's uh, completely unremarkable. All right, so yeah, that is Night Prowler with Cheetor. So getting balanced here. We will move on to our next bot. And moving right along to our second bot, this is Mr. Sandstorm, and he's standing here with his mold mate, his twin, Mr. Scorponok. So as you can see, between the two, the only difference is that head sculpt. So let's go ahead and bring those in so you can get a closer look as far as those two heads go. So yeah, the, 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 this, this, it's kind of an ugly head. I, I like his head better. But overall, I do like the color scheme on Sandstorm more than the color scheme on Scorponok. It's just more of a natural desert color. But hey, that's just my opinion. But you can see between these two guys, everything else is exactly the same other than the colors. So, uh, of course, the, the, the molding, the texturing, all of that exactly the same. The little scorpion legs, the big claws nothing different whatsoever on these guys let's take a look at them from the back same huge hollow areas all right and from the side all right so there you go and as i mentioned earlier uh, if you want to see more scale comparisons to these figures go check out the previous videos that i did uh, in this case for scorponok just for fun, uh, one of the comparisons that I did was the Titan class Scorponok. So you can see this little guy next to a Titan. So, but yeah, uh, transformation, comparisons, greater level of detail, anything like that. Go check out those previous videos. I'll have them linked in the description below. All right, let's go ahead and move on to bot number three. And last, but certainly not least, this is the third bot that we're going to take a look at. This is the Buzzsaw figure, and he's standing here with his mold mate as well, which is the Kingdom Waspinator. So, as mentioned with Sam's Sandstorm, exact same geometry, nothing whatsoever is different as far as the physical molded components of these two figures, except for those heads. So let's go ahead and bring those heads in, and you can see the difference there. And each of these is unique, and each of these I like. So... I have affection for Buzzsaw over here. I do like that face sculpt and I do like the light piping that they have for the eyes. Uh, I do like Scorp or, uh, Waspinator over here. And although he has light piping, uh, it's not quite as effective. So his eyes don't glow as much, but that head sculpt is really cool. So I do like both of these guys' head sculpts probably pretty equally. I would be hard pressed to choose between the two. And as far as the color scheme goes, I think Buzzsaw is probably a little more natural as far as the color scheme. I mean, there's not, not to say there aren't any, but there are just aren't many stinging insects out there that have purple wings like Waspinator does. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I like both of these guys. I think out of the three, uh, the Buzzsaw, Sandstorm, and Night Prowler, Buzzsaw is the, the, my favorite out of those three. I, I just like this figure. I like this mold. Uh, it, it's not without its flaws, don't get me wrong, but I do enjoy it more so than the other two. So let's go ahead and take a look at those guys side to side, or lined up in a row, if you will. And the only difference, I, I have 
his stinger weapon in his right hand and I have Buzzsaw stinger weapon in his left hand. All right, and then from the back. And then from the left side. All right, and then maybe kind of a uh, three-quarter view there. But yeah, not a lot to talk about here. It's it's the it's the same figure as the Waspinator, and as I mentioned, go back, watch my Waspinator video if you want to see some more comparisons, if you want to see details, if you want to see transformation on these guys. I've got it all in those videos right there. So, but yeah, that's going to do it for the, uh, the bot comparisons. So let's go ahead. I'll do a little montage here. I'll bring all three guys in with their mold mates. We'll take a look at them there real brief briefly, and then we'll get into those final thoughts. So for that last overall comparison, uh, we'll take a look here at all, all three of them with their mold mates standing right behind them so you can see how all that works out. But yeah, I mean, this is a fun little trio. Um, like I said, uh, out of the three, still my favorite. And even for the original guys out of those three, still my favorite. So there you go. Let's go ahead and get into the final thoughts and wrap this review up. Oh man, I can't speak for you guys, but this was fun. This is the first time I've ever uh, reviewed three figures at the same time. So let's go ahead and get into those final thoughts. And I'm going to try to make it quick here because we do have three figures to talk about. Um, in short, I'm just going to give you the punchline now. These are all remolds. They're not even the best remolds of the best molds that Hasbro has put out. So uh, frankly, I think all of these can be skipped pretty easily. Um, I hate to say that, but I do. Out of the three, I think Buzzsaw is the best. But let's jump into it real quick, and we're going to start start with the aesthetics, uh, starting with Night Prowler first. His alt mode looks really good. You know, just like Cheetor, just like Shadow Panther, the alt mode looks really good here. The, the bot mode suffers. Yeah, I mean, he resembles a robot, uh, but the more I see this mold, the less I like it. Um, so he, he pulls it off, but not fantastically, but the alt mode, at least he does look like a big cat. So I'm going to give him a seven out of 10 on aesthetics. Moving on to Sandstorm for his aesthetics. Uh, I really like the color scheme, what they've done here. I think particularly in his alt mode, uh, he does a much better job of actually looking like a scorpion you would find in the desert versus the Scorponok color scheme. That head is ugly though. In the alt mode, it is certainly a, an ugly head. But molding wise, uh, the sculpt work and everything on there looks pretty good. So I'm going to give him an 8 out of 10 on aesthetics. Moving on to Buzzsaw. Uh, not a lot of bad things to say here with Buzzsaw. I really do like the way he looks in both of his modes. And I do think that the colors look a little bit more natural on him as well. And the light piping is far more effective uh, for his eyes in robot mode than what we saw with Waspinator. Um, so uh, nothing amazing here, but I think he does look pretty good. I'm going to give him an 8 out of 10. Moving on to articulation, starting with Night Prowler. Uh, it's it's okay. It's it's not amazing. It does most of the stuff that you would expect it to do. Uh, however, he still has those tiny feet, and he has that head in cat mode. If only they would have given that head some articulation in the cat mode, uh, it, you could have gotten him in some more natural poses in his alt mode. Uh, so I'm going to give him a 7 out of 10 on, a, on articulation. Moving on to Sandstorm, uh, for his articulation, yeah, he, he does a good job, uh, but he gets in his own way a lot. Just uh, having those big bulky claws and having those tiny feet at the bottoms of those uh, short and stout legs can make it difficult to pose this guy sometimes, uh, but he does have fairly decent range of motion, so I'm giving him an 8 out of 10 on articulation. And moving on to Buzzsaw, he suffers from the same thing that Sandstorm does. His insect legs really get in the way in robot mode. I mean, you're constantly going to be fiddling with those. Uh, so it's just something to be aware of. The actual range of motion for all the joints is pretty good. And he, by far, out of the three we've looked at, he by far has the most stable feet. Um, but I'm going to give him a 7 out of 10 on articulation simply because of those, those insect legs. And moving on to accessories, not going to spend a lot of time here. All three of them, their accessories suck. I'm just going to say it. Uh, I'm sick and tired of seeing that tail whip. Uh, that comes with Night Prowler. I'm giving him a 6 out of 10. Sandstorm, he's got the same two accessories that he had with the the uh, Scorponok figure. Sorry, I blanked out on it for a second, but with the Scorponok figure. And they're okay, but they're nothing amazing. So I'm giving him a 7 out of 10, especially since we've seen them before. And same thing with Buzzsaw here. It's his stinger gun. It looks cool, but we've seen it before. 7 out of 10. 
So moving on to quality, starting with Night Prowler. Each of these guys has their own quality issues, uh, which is a little bit of a shame. Uh, but Night Prowler in particular, um, you know, his overall quality is pretty good, but he, he has loose feet. And if he's going to have them anywhere, that is the worst place to have loose joints on this figure because his feet are already so tiny and you couple that with the fact that they're loose and he falls over really easy. Uh, but for the most part, everything else checks out. I'm going to give him an eight out of 10, uh, sandstorm, same thing. He, he's got loose shoulders. So, and, and he has a lot of weight to carry with those claws right there. Uh, but unfortunately, those shoulders sometimes just aren't up to the task. They're just too loose. And frankly, I don't know what it is about Sandstorm, but when you're holding him, he feels cheap. Uh, I don't know if that would go into the overall value category, but I'm putting it here in quality. I'm giving him an 8 out of 10. And the buzzsaw figure, everything about this guy is nice and tight and looks good and does everything that it was supposed to do except for the waist. That waist is so loose. Like, it's distractingly loose when I'm trying to transform and pose him. So, uh, nothing that I couldn't fix on my own, but out of the box, that's disappointing. I'm giving him an 8 out of 10. So, bringing us to our last point, which is overall value. Uh, all three of these figures I picked up on a shelf in a Walmart uh, here in North America, and they were 22 US dollars and change. So, let's call it 23 US dollars to pick these figures up for deluxe class figures. First of all, the price is creeping up. I don't like that. Second of all, I don't think any of these figures is worth that price point. Um, so the, the in particular, Night Prowler, uh, we've already seen this mold twice. It's not the best mold. We've This is the third time, at least that I know of, that, that, that I've seen it. Um, and we've already seen it in Cheetor and Shadow Panther. And I don't think the value's there. I'm giving him a five out of 10. Sandstorm, we've already seen it in the Scorponok figure. I'm giving him a 6 out of 10. I just simply don't think the price is worth it for these remolds. And finally, with Buzzsaw, he is the best out of the three, but still I'm giving him a 7 out of 10 just because we've already seen this before. And uh, these guys are just reruns, and they're not even the best reruns. So for our grand totals, Night Prowler is going to get 33 out of a possible 50 points, which puts him at a 66%. And as I mentioned earlier, I will not be recommending this figure. Secondly, Sandstorm gets 37 out of 50, which puts him at 74%. And I'm right on the fence about recommendation on this guy. Uh, it, it, I, I'm going to not recommend him, but if you've got an affinity for scorpions, then go for it. And finally, for Buzzsaw, he also gets 37 out of 50, which puts him at 74%. I'm not going to recommend him per se, but I am going to tell you that out of the three, I'm glad I picked him up. I do enjoy him. So I have the least amount of regret picking up Buzzsaw. Uh, these other two guys, I can't say the same thing. All right, so that's going to wrap up this review. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the triple review here. I wanted to knock these three guys out together uh, to uh, get this information out to you. So I hope you were entertained. I hope you got some good information out of this. And if you haven't already done so, be sure to hit the like button, be sure to subscribe and leave some comments below. Let me know what you think about the channel and about these figures. And just one last reminder, if you want to see transformation, if you want to see greater details, if you want to see uh, better comparisons, go check out the original videos for each of these figures in the form of the Waspinator, the Cheetor, and the Scorponok. I'll have those links in the description below. So until we see you guys in the next review, take care.